McDonald Nurse, better known to Suez and his colleagues who played with him in the 60s as Castle. Simon Nurse was my idol, my mentor, my coach, my hero, my manager, my icon. Growing up in Holdersell, all the young boys wanted to be Simon Nurse. We all wanted to be like him. We used to walk like him. We used to talk like him. We tried to bat like him. But I must confess, no one copied him better than Lionel Sandiford. Seymour was stylish, wristy, a joy to watch when batting. His leg glance, his back cut, his flick off his legs was sweet to watch. I remember going up, going to Kensington to watch him play with some guys from Horvisil. We were sitting in the stand, down front in the Kensington stand, and Seymour came out to bat. He chipped down the stairs went on to the grass, he looked up to the heavens, he dropped his right shoulder and walked to the crease. The crowd and my friends went wild. Then my friend said to me, let's go. I said, what? He said, let's go. I said, no way. I came here to walk Simo back. And my friends told me they have seen enough. They told me that just watching Simo walk to the crease is enough. He doesn't have to make a single run. That was the man and that is the impression he had on us. I got the opportunity when I was starting out my career as a young batsman going to trials for the under 19 to be coached by Seymour. As my critics would say that I never could have played spin. But I remember having some problems against the spinners and he made me bat without pads. Then he said to me, now, I'm sure you're not gonna let that ball hit you on your foot, so you're just gonna let that bat lead. That is a coach that I believe in, and I must say, he has helped me over the years. Simo worked as a coach at the National Sports Council, and he has touched many cricketers' lives. He managed the under-19 team, and played a significant role in cricket development in Barbados. But in the last four to five years, when Seymour has deteriorated, we at the legends, the cricket legends of Barbados, we were privileged to be there for Seymour and his family. As chairman of the cricket legends of Barbados, I would like to offer my condolences to his daughters and family, and I would like to thank the government of Barbados, the BCA, and the public for all their well wishes. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. The life of Seymour MacDonald Nurse is deserving of celebration. The grace and elegance of the batsman, the organization and vision of the administrator, the knowledge and kindness of the coach, the commitment of the friend, the love of a father. Simo was an all-round class act who left an impression on those with whom he came into contact. And the Barbados Cricket Association is proud to celebrate the contribution of this legend of the game and of our country. In 2001, the Barbados Cricket Association elected Simon Nurse an honorary a life vice president in recognition of his active contribution to the association. This acknowledgement came a few months shy of his 68th birthday and represented over 30 years of tireless service to the development of the local game after his retirement from Test Cricket in 1969. That retirement, a moment of bewilderment for many 
remains a testament to Seymour's commitment to principle and spirit of contentment, characteristics which endeared him to many colleagues and acquaintances alike. It is those qualities which undoubtedly contributed to the wide-ranging success he enjoyed while serving the Barbados Creek Association in various coaching, managerial, and administrative capacities. Seymour Nurse was a serious man with an underlying steely resolve, yet outwardly marked by calmness and gentility. Perhaps it was this combination of characteristics that came to identify this powerfully built man with the batting artistry of the iconic Sir Frank World. Indeed, another legend of the Empire Club, the distinguished Sir Everton Weeks, once described Seymour's batting as delightful to watch, remarking that he had all the strokes and was very stylish, similar to Sir Frank World. Undoubtedly, a compliment, a compliment of the highest order. Despite the accolades and plaudits that consistently flowed in his direction because of his batting excellence, one of the enduring marks of the man Seymour Nurse was his desire to contribute. The ease with which he shared from his treasury of information and experience demonstrates a heart that was full of, to overflowing and there is no doubt that Seymour enjoyed the role he played in developing young players in Barbados and across the Caribbean. In fact, Seymour admitted that he totally enjoyed coaching and seeing the youngsters develop and move from schoolboy players to the Barbados team and ultimately the West Indies team. Some of those teenagers who benefited from the coaching of Seymour included Malcolm Marshall, Joel Garner, Desmond Haynes, Sherwin Campbell, Roland Hood, Courtney Brown, and Ian Bradshaw. There's no doubt that several of those former Barbados and West Indies players retained fond memories of the legendary batsman. March 29th marked 50 years since Seymour Nurse signed off from international cricket at the age of 36. A final in a score of 258 against New Zealand at Christchurch remains the highest score in the final innings of an international career. Coupled with a superior test average of 47, many may have lamented Seymour's decision to retire at that stage, harboring many thoughts of what if. Such doubting and review posturing did not apply to Seymour who continued to represent Barbados in first-class competition until 1972, lending further guidance to those yet to come and follow in its footsteps as a hero of the West Indian nation and civilization. Clarity of mind and certainty of action are essential for success in cricket and life. And the man who recorded his maiden test set 100, a majestic double century, 201, against Australia, right here at Kensal Oval, was a shining example of these two traits. As a result, Barbados' cricket is indeed richer. Seymour MacDonald Nurse remains a hero of Barbados as the contribution he made on the cricket field during the 1960s served to inspire fellow Barbadians and helped to imbue tremendous confidence in our capacity to hold our own on the international stage. All that Seymour has accomplished will remain indelibly etched in the vision of the Barbados Cricket Association. For like his, ours is a pursuit of excellence in contribution. On behalf of the Barbados Cricket Association, I wish to thank his family and close friends for their contribution to his life of excellence over the years and pray that his legacy continues to fill you with a sense of pride, knowing that his was a life of purpose. Rest in peace, Seymour, and we pray that God will bless and keep you. I've been asked to read a tribute 
from cricket West Indies, which has no do. Simon Hurst was once one of the greatest batsmen ever to play the game and typified all the best of West Indian batting. Flamboyant stroke play combined with powerful hitting and an insatiable appetite for runs. Like most West Indian players of his generation, he not only enjoyed playing internationally, but he displayed his batting artistry on every opportunity he got a chance from club matches for his beloved empire to the West Indies First Class Championship for Barbados and ultimately for West Indies. He will be fondly remembered not only for the legacy he created on the field, but the way he represented the game off the field. I have one more tribute which is from the which is penned by Kathy Harper Hall. And it, it's about Seymour's work at the National Sports Council. Simone Nurse worked as a cricket coach in the capacity of sports officer when the government sports department from the early 1960s. This was then the department of the Ministry of Education. In 1976, that department was closed and the National Sports Council was established. He along with the rest of the staff of the government sports department were transferred to the National Sports Council where he acted as senior coach from 1976 to 1978. He reverted to his substantive post of cricket coach until 1982, when he was appointed to the post of senior coach. He worked in that capacity from 1982 until he retired in 1994. During his tenure as cricket coach and later senior coach, he coordinated the first Salino Laku Primary School's cricket competition, which was re later renamed the Herman Griffith Primary School's cricket competition. As senior coach, he was also responsible for the supervision of the National Sports Council cricket coaches. Seymour served as an officer under the supervision of gov the government's sports officer, Nigel Harper, 1960s to 1976, and under the directors of, sport, of sports, Keith Ashby, 1976 to 1980, Stanton Paris, 1980 to 1982, and Alvin Burgess, 1983 to 2005. To quote Kathy Harper Hall, with whom he worked first as co-senior coach, then later under supervision as assistant director of sports from 1982 to 94 when he retired. Seymour said was the ultimate co-worker. The qualities that I admired most in Seymour were his loyalty to any task to which he was assigned and his total respect for women. He was simply the best. Thank you. Mr. President and a life member of Empire Club. He represented our club in both cricket and football with distinction. His feats on and off the field as an Empire player member are legendary. Seymour Nurse is arguably one of the finest right-handed batsmen of our cricket time. Some may argue that there were others who were just as good as he was, but very few could support that there were many better than he was. Royal Branker, one of his dearest friends and fans, was a classic talent. And playing on either side of the wicket, very few walk close to his sublime class. Whether he was playing for Empire, or the Cricket in England, or the West Indies all over the world, Seymour Nurse delighted crowds continuously. Seymour's contribution to Empire Club was tremendously outstanding. And not only did he play cricket well into his 40s, but he also represented both Empire and Barbados in football. In fact, in one afternoon's championship match, he scored seven consecutive goals for Empire in the dissemination of another local club, which we will remain nameless for today. It is also a legend at the club that for the first two seasons of Seymour played over 40s for Empire, he has a distinguished record of never being dismissed once in that two year period. Still making runs and coaching and being at the club to help mentor many of us better our game and attitude. Seymour was a wonderful person on and off the field. 
He enjoyed the game tremendously. Conviviality and fellowship after the games, which is a rich tradition at Empire, was a part of his life. He would remain for hours and hours after a game, discussing the finer points of the game and club life. Seymour was involved in every aspect of the club's activities, and we were fortunate and blessed to have Seymour along with Sir Everton, Sir Charles, and many of our other stalwarts travel with us on our centenary tour to London in 2014. It was amazing to watch the Empire and Barbados diaspora flock to our games to support us against local English clubs, but also to interact with our stalwarts and relive memories of past days glory. To watch Seymour and our fellow stalwarts interact with people was truly amazing. We will forever cherish the bonds of friendship shared on that tour and those memories that we held there to all of us. Permit me, if you will, to tell you a little anecdote about how Seymour every morning would check the time to see what time it was because he had a ritual of calling his daughters and he would make sure he didn't want to call them too early. So he would make sure it was the correct time in their time zone and make his call. He loved them dearly and thank you for lending him to us. Simone Norris is one of those giants upon whose shoulders we as a club stand. 105 year old institutions like Empire exist and more importantly remain relevant to sports or society in our country because of distinguished sons of our soil, like Seymour Nurse. He, along with our other stalwarts, have contributed and helped to shape and define who we are as a club and a dare say nation. We will miss his sober counsel, wise leadership, and his strong character. Empire Club is the richer for his presence and camaraderie, and the poorer for his loss. On behalf of the trustees, the committee of management, the members of Empire Club, we extend our condolences, our sincere condolences to his family and friends. We have not lost only a mighty and great cricketer, but a tremendous man and a loyal friend. May he rest in peace and rise in